Hello Space Engineers, welcome back to High Festus Prime, Wellington 6012 here, and uh, yeah, welcome back to the moon. So yes, another another day on the moon, and yeah, I've done a little bit of stuff off camera, uh, just sort of monotonous stuff that doesn't really make for good TV, and yeah, I'll show you around. Uh, first is a little bit of a landing pad for the Aether, so it's got its own little dock now. Uh, yes, and that's what we'll start off first with today actually is uh, just having a look at this now I've mined some platinum so we're ready to send a load back to Fort Rutherford and yeah and I've I've set up the uh, remote controls which were mainly set I just double checked them so a few times and things so uh, we'll go and have a look at that in a minute it. Uh, first of all we might just actually head down to the platinum mine and I'll show you what's happening down there so yeah it's uh, ticking along down here it's only a very small vein as you can see uh, there are a few little bits that are sort of away from the vein so like here this is just down underneath a little and yeah just trying to Trying to guide it so it ends up back down in the in the collector is a little bit of a challenge because just the lack of gravity here on the moon really. Uh, same over here, we've got just a little tiny bit there. Uh, yeah, so I've done a little bit of work just to make sure that they sort of funnel their way back down to the collector down the bottom there. But that's all good. We'll uh, turn this on. Uh, we'll get rid of you. Drills, drills, drills. There we are. So turn them on. And what I'll do is uh, I've just been extending this by about sort of uh, half a meter, one and a half meters each time. Just about there. Doesn't need to be exact. And just reverse that. So that'll um, that'll get most of it anyway. Right uh, now. So, we do have uh, a reasonable amount of platinum in here now. And you see the stones just coming and going. Now, I have actually turned off the inlet to the refinery. Because, if we look over here, we do have more than enough resource at the moment. Yeah, so plenty, energy plenty there. Energy, energy, energy. That's I've put in this temporary med, uh, medical bay because just sick of because it's so cold up here it's uh zapping through my energy real quick uh speaking of energy we are a little bit low on power there's a little bit there and we are gaining ever so slowly but um that's pretty much because i've got the i don't know if you can hear them but i have got the hydrogen engines going on this, just to give it a little bit of a bit of a top up and yes yeah, so it just must be we're so far towards the pole here on the moon the days do seem pretty short and the nights seem pretty long so what i'm actually going to do is the first thing once i've organized the aether and got that on its way back to port rutherford i'm going to put in uh, some solar panels in here so i figure i may as well make the most of the sun when it is up I think that'll be in a good spot because it sort of um, comes up over there and sort of goes across there and down there so I think that's a pretty good spot there which uh, it's not going to solely provide energy for the base but uh, it'll go a long way to help and there is ice just over there so that'll be one of our sort of early goals I guess to 
get some sort of uh, yeah hydrogen coming back because I think probably hydrogen's the way to go. Uh, that said, we do want to send the safe back and get it back up into orbit and pick up some uh, uranium from the Sirius since uh, none of the stations here actually sell it, which is a bit of a shame. As you can see, we do have a dump valve here. Well, there's the dump valve and there's the dump uh, for all the stones. So let's see if stone and gravel. Gravel was also clogging up my system quite a bit as well. So, yeah, that's where we're at. We'll get the Aether away up into orbit, first of all. So, how am I going to do that? So, go into the... Uh, well, actually, we should probably fill it up first. With the old platinum. So, there so that one's full that connector's full but I'm not actually going to fill up the connectors that one needs a little bit of a top up that one needs a whole lot and that one needs a whole lot and that one needs a whole lot so that's a fairly decent amount now with that in mind I have actually increased the number of uh, parachutes, so hmm, there's those ones there, but I guess I just haven't renamed them once, so that, uh, yeah, but anyway, there's double the amount of parachutes, I think, uh, yes, yes, I've doubled, hang on, just going to check, what did I do, I put, yeah, I put, those are the originals, and then I put another two there, and another two there. So there's eight, because I am a bit worried about the weight of it. I mean, when it was just coming back with sort of stuff, it did seem to hit the ground pretty hard. Right, uh, so that's all loaded. Now we'll go into the remote control, into the main one, and we'll just control that. Uh, probably the most important thing is making sure that the antennas turn which it is, and it's pumped right up. Uh, what about the fire? I might just put that up to 1500 and turn it on. Uh, uh, antennas, I'll come back to antennas because that's really going to be the main focus of today. Get this Aether away. Right, so that's all fine. We'll turn it off recharge. And turn the thrusters on. And I think I think we're good to go. What could possibly go wrong? And we're away. No worries. So we'll just head up into orbit. So the gravity is rapidly dropping just giving it the old pulse technique uh, I, can't remember what it's, I don't think I've got set up the um, override thingy but we're just about there now I've got a remote control set up in here which what I'm going to do is I'm going to point this towards the gravity interface and I'll get it up to zero now so that's awesome let's click on so we'll just turn our GPS on and gravity interface approach that's what I want so I want to aim for that and what I'm going to do is I'm going to aim for that I'm going to turn the thrusters off once yeah. Go now. And then it's about 120 kilometers away. So I've got a timer which is going to turn on. Right. So now we're just cruising over there. So 10 seconds per kilometer, that would be 1,200 seconds. So there's a timer in here which is. 
engaging the autopilot entry. So we want that set uh, 1200 seconds. And what that's going to do is turn the thrusters on. I need to put in the that one. I think it's that one. Yep. So it's going to turn that autopilot on, turn on the thrusters. So that's all good. So we'll start that. So the one that it was going to turn on was the uh, remote autopilot re entry. And that's got the gravity interface and the pad. So when it gets to the gravity interface, it's going to activate the free fall engage and it's going to turn around and it's going to head down towards the lake bed. And that timer, the uh, re entry, after a minute, it's going to turn off the hydrogen thrusters. Oh, must be out of range. And uh, turn off the autopilot. That's just to reset the thrusters. It's going to make sure that the parachutes are on and that the landing gear is on. And yes, that's out of range. So, uh, very good. Heading back. So, yes, as I said, uh, we're going to put in some solar panels to sort of fill up the gap between here and over here. And what I'm going to put over here is a little bit of a communications array and the point of that is obviously to talk back to uh, Hyphestus Prime of Fort Rutherford and the Alp it'll be a mini version of the Alpine Communications Hub so no room, I don't think I'm going to put a room on it not too sure but uh, yeah it'll just be that the relay station I'll probably need to put in an actual bit of protection as well because there have been space pirates come by every now and then and yeah if any of them sort of decide to spawn anything I think it's low enough gravity here that they might come down for a visit hmm okay so uh, that's uh, that's what we're up to today so we'll extend this walkway down here and then we'll head over there and I'm gonna sort of angle the angle the solar panels off so um, yeah I think that's gonna take a little while though not a huge amount of time, just yeah, it's going to be a little bit niggly getting the angles right and stuff and I'll just clear some stone out of the way. And uh, yeah, so montage time I think. Oh, actually just before we do that, the thing is just over here temporarily I've put in this um, power safe mode. So that just shuts, uh, at the moment it's just shutting down all the lights and apart from these sort of red lights which are the, the power down mode. Although in saying that, it seems very bright to me just over here. And I'm not sure where the white light in this sort of area is coming from. I cannot track it down. Whether it's coming out. Oh, it's... it's, 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 it's that's why. Uh, mystery solved. Right. Uh, montage time. Solar panels. And then we'll get on with the uh, antenna relay.
Okay, so that is all sorted. Uh, they've turned out pretty well, actually. Took a little while for the sun to come up above the crater, but uh, now it's there. We've got uh, four green lights on each of the panels, so that's uh, that's very good. That will help. That will help keep the batteries uh, sort of topped up. Hopefully, that's enough to sort of uh, charge and run them for when I'm not here. There will be some other solar panels going. I've just redone the aether pad there a little bit, uh, just to make it a little bit bigger. And I think it looks better that way. And yes, here is our platform for our communications array. So, uh, now that I look at it, yeah, that's only 4x4. Four four. I probably want it 5x5 five five so that I can get it in the middle. Uh, yeah, stand by. Right, so a fair bit of steel later, we're uh, all done. Now, uh, this is going to be very similar to the uh, Mount Rutherford Communications Hub, the uh, antenna. Maybe not as high, but uh, similar sort of layout. Now, uh, I would like to say that I remembered, I remembered how it all goes together and what I did. I just had to quickly go back and watch the video because uh, <laughs> I sort of forgot how I did it. So just got the scaffolding type look up through the middle there and using the silver armor and then using these uh, red things here, walkways I should say, uh, upside down so that they're on the right level. So a couple there and then a couple at 90 degrees we do that a couple of times and then uh, link them up with ladders yeah so I think that's right we'll put these ladders in and just see how that's looking uh, we get some parts for ladders and <laughs> we'll see how that's looking oh, back in a minute all right a little bit easier to make ladders when you've got the components so we'll just put those two in and just going to put in another two here and then I think the next uh, layer I will put on the laser antenna and then yeah I'll put some more sort of uh, levels above that not many I think we're just about at the top so we'll put a laser antenna here because we need it to point to the earth-like planet it's no good having it uh, facing the other way there we go, because they are somewhat directional. They won't go backwards through themselves. Right, just grab some more parts. Ooh, they do take quite a bit, these things. I think it's just the radio components, because they're, they're quite bulky. There we go. Now I'll just rename this, well, not completely rename it. Uh, now, I'm still just calling stuff Lunar Base for now, uh, but Lunar, without the R, is actually the Roman god of the moon. Uh, the Greek goddess, I think, and I need just to check this, is uh, Selene, I think. So, yeah, you may, once I have a chance to start checking that, uh, I might start putting that in so when I actually finally do get around to getting that right I'll make uh, I'll tell you exactly who I'm pretty sure it's Selene S-E-L-E-N-E -E, I think is the uh, Greek goddess of the moon right so we'll just uh, put on another couple of layers yeah and then and then I'll put on the sort of uh, small grid antenna above that not an actual small grid antenna I'm just talking about the I use the corner blocks to make the on top of a rotor thing to uh, yeah and lights and stuff so you see what I'm doing here what I'll do is I'll um, finish this off and we'll flip forward to the end because I have to put the lights and stuff on as well yeah uh, I'll just keep doing this be back soon Alright, so that is the last light. I'll just uh, adjust the 
offset. There we go. So that's uh, that's all pretty much done. Now, in actual fact, the only thing that's on there is the laser antenna. So I do need to think about a regular antenna, which uh, what I'm going to do, I think, yeah, that's looking good. Yeah, happy with that. Uh, yeah, I think I'm just going to build a little bit of a bridge and put the a, a, a nice big satellite dish. Uh, why not? Why not? Normally I just put them in for decoration, but I'll actually leave this one turned on. And that can be my uh, main antenna for up here. Can be my 50Ks of uh, transmission. So how am I going to do this? Uh, I'll just come out here with some walkways. Just grab parts for those. Alright, so I'm just going to put this uh, walkway across here. I think I've dropped it down low enough. Make a bit of a bridge and then I'll step it back up. And I might do some decoration with a little bit of uh, interior pillars just to um, make it look like it's supported. <laughs> uh, I've gone with this blue colour here on the moon, I think. So it's a battered steel, steel same as the sort of red that I've done uh, in other places. So like the Midi Armour Rocket and uh, Aether, that's sort of, and the Centipede, that's sort of red. So I figure up here on the moon I'm going to go with the blue theme. I think it works quite well with the, the white sort of uh, rock. Now I have been producing quite a few resources because it did run out. Components I should say. And I'll just give myself a bit of a top up. Uh, yeah, I've been chewing through it. I have been contemplating actually turning the refinery back on just to see yeah how we actually offer a resource i did have like 50k there at one stage just get rid of this here and in there so the gold and stuff is what i brought with me but this container here has the stuff that i've been refining and it's down to 28k well it was on 50 so i've actually not used as much as what i thought uh, but yeah i am uh, steadily steadily eating through the stuff that's okay we've got the refinery and things in place to replace it now uh what i'm thinking is that i am aware of time so i might just uh lay this out and yeah i'll um i'll probably skip this rather than a montagey thing I think you know what I'm sort of up to and you've seen me put in these dishes before with the uh, rotors and uh, hinges and that so yeah leave this with me and maybe I'll just come back with the final thing and I'll have a decent fly around and show you what I've done and then we need to tap into the aether because it's probably back at Fort Rutherford by now and uh, unload it and sort of get it heading its way back here. Alright, so welcome back. Just a little bit of daylight left. But uh, yeah, the days are not very long around here. First of all, just before we go and have a look at the communication stuff, the solar panels are performing quite well. So obviously we've lost uh, power on that one because the landing pad's sort of in the way, but still got four solid bars there. And how are we off? Fully recharged in three hours. The sun's going to go down, so that's not going to happen. But and I've still got those hydrogen engines going on the mud of my rocket. But, uh, yeah, pretty happy with how they are performing. So that's uh, good. And it hurts not as I haven't been working. You know, I've been using the assembler pretty much non-stop. Uh, yes. So let us uh, go down our walkway and head over to the communications array. So really happy with these walkways. They've come up quite well. Uh, yeah, so good for linking everything together. I think eventually, I wasn't planning on it, but I think that these walkways are going to go right around the perimeter of this crater. I suspect that I will make an effort. I'm not planning to, but I just know me. I will probably end up putting some more stuff over there and I'll just about link the whole thing up, so... Yeah, that's, that's a bit of a plan. Now, this uh, tower here, I showed you before, but um, yeah, pretty basic. 
It does the trick. I quite like that sort of decorative thing on top there, the small grid stuff. Yeah. Uh, there's our laser antenna. So we'll talk back to Hyphestus Prime in Fort Rowford momentarily. The only thing with this is I do just wonder whether I should have put in a room down here, just a small communications room, because now I'm in the position where I actually want to talk and I can only sort of sit in my ship. Now, when I get more facilities over there, that'll be great, but I'm just wondering if I did miss a trick by putting a small room in. Yeah. I have a bit of a think about that. I may still do it. Uh, I'd probably just use a piston, jack this whole thing up, and then lower it back down with a merge block rather than rebuilding it. Um, or just work in with what's already there. Mm. Anyway, let's go over here and... Yeah, again, these walkways, just quite like them. They've come up well. A little bit of uh, extra decoration there, and just in case something does shoot it and it breaks, it won't completely fall to bits. Uh, here's our main antenna. So we've got the dish there, just doing a little bit of uh, ambient movement. Got a hinge and a rotor, and those are the timers there that just reverse it every so often. So, yeah, that's all good. Now, I'm thinking that I will have to put in some defenses so maybe a gatling gun about here turret i mean and probably put another one over here somewhere as well uh, yeah i think that's uh probably a good idea i won't i won't necessarily do it on camera i'll just do it at some other point um yeah so that's uh that's the communication stuff so really quite happy with how that's come out just thinking just thinking 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 that if I go about oh, there maybe yeah screenshot cool right let's just jump into I guess I have to jump into here okay so if we find the laser antenna and oh, we'll need to bump that up to 250 k's, that'll do. Uh, there's none. Oh, why are there no receivers in here? Damn. Damn, 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 damn. Okay. Uh, right. Looks like we might be going for a little bit of a fly. Uh, got a marker for Sirius? Yes, we do. 132Ks. So... I only need to get within 50 of it. 80Ks. Oh, well, I need to, need to get the need to get the coordinates so what I'll do is I'll take the coordinates of this one with me right so thrusters on recharge onto auto launch we go just get out of that view because it's uh, quite loud in there all right so yeah um, 80 kilometers so that's 10 seconds per K 800 seconds 600 would be 10 minutes another 200 so 13 and a half minutes oh well we'll see you in about 13 and a half minutes then Okay, so we're just coming up on the 50k mark now. There have been one or two pirate signals flashing in and out, just like um, the, what do you call it, the Mayday signals. But nothing's really come close. There we go. So we can put our uh, inertial dampness back on and stop. And why can't we get into any of these? Because our antenna's not turned up. Let's try that. Aha, there we go. 
Right. Uh, Mount Rabbit for communications. Go into the laser. Oh, it's not even on. But I should have still been able to see the other one. Oh, maybe not. Hmm. Okay, so we're on and going now. So if we paste the coordinates. Rotating, searching for laser GPS coordinates. Why can't it find them? Okay. If I... Okay, that's all on. That's linked up. Connect to coordinates. I'm going to click that. Searching for them. Hmm. Okay. Uh... Right. What I'll do, I should have been able to connect. Okay, I'll copy those coordinates. I'll just make a um, position here, just in case I need to fly something out automatically. Sirius Luna. Uh, We'll head back to the moon. And uh, yeah, it's um, about 30 k's, I think. 30 k's to get back into coverage. So we'll see you in about 30 k's. Okay, so we've just clicked over the 30 k's. Still haven't got my signals coming through range. I know I could just jump in the GPS and pull up like one of the ore deposits or something that would tell me but, uh, no, it should just about be here as soon as I jump into that menu they'll pop up I guarantee it so that's why I'm not doing it here we go haha -ha. right into there and paste it's not pasting was not pasting. It's on. Hmm. Uh, okay. Right. Well, I think we're going to have to go for a plan B. So we'll just make a mark there. And I think it's roughly about 85 Ks. Uh, yes, I think uh, for next time we're going to have to put some uh, relay antennas in. So whether that's just some little droney thing. Uh, yeah, so I'm, um, yeah. Unless I get back to the um, lunar base and find it something really obvious, like it's, uh, I've just completely mucked up and not seen the big huge planet that fills up the entire sky and somehow got it pointing in the wrong direction um i don't think so though so yeah um but anyway once i even if it's just a temporary connection using regular antennas i think i should be able to get the laser plugged in then uh yeah and there is a mayday signal out there and there was some other nasties behind me nothing's chasing me though so that's okay so uh yes hopefully you can join me again next time we'll um yeah, unless I figure out something else, we'll send some little mobile relay things out. And uh, yeah, I do want to build sort of a little bit of a hangar. I mean, power is a thing, of course. Uh, but I do want to build a hangar for the flyer, the lunar flyer, and the lunar buggy as well. Uh, and then potentially another sort of hangar slash workshop that I can make some other vehicle in. Because it's cold outside on the moon. I really am just sick of well, having to recharge all the time because it's just so cold. But anyway, hopefully you can join me then. Stay safe out there, everybody. Have a good one.